In this video I'd like to try to detail for you guys why building a unique one copy of each card, Reno, Jackson, Kazakis, or possibly Archbishop Benedictus, having those unique cards with the exception of Kazakis ended up being more of a hindrance than an actual help. So first off, I'd like to point out how bad cards like Archbishop Benedictus and Reno Jackson actually are in Dungeon Wars. So Archbishop Benedictus copies your opponent's deck and puts it in your deck. The problem is, in Dungeon Run, the most important component is the special ability that your opponent has, not their actual cards. In most cases, the cards that your opponent are drawing from the deck that would actually go into your deck are so bad that by playing Archbishop Benedictus, you're actually dramatically lowering the overall quality of your deck. So here you can see I drew a 6 mana 3 a taunt, which is actually probably one of the better draws I could have gotten out of his cards. But even then, that's a card that would not be played at all in Constructed, and if you've played enough Dungeon Run, you know that by the end you have to have an absolutely broken deck to actually compete. Opponents like King Togawako actually play horrible minions in their deck, he's just tough to beat because of his absolutely broken hero power. Next, when you are actually trying to get cards like Reno Jackson to trigger, you have to give up having duplicates in your deck, obviously. But that is a huge problem because most of the good cards you would actually want in your deck twice. It works in Constructed if you're playing Highlander Priest, sure, but that's because you get to pick and choose each of those 30 cards that go into your deck. If you have to play unique cards, you're gonna end up with a lot of bad trash in your deck just to make those effects pull off. Now, about Reno Jackson himself, you might think, okay, healing to full, that's pretty good. And back in the day when you could actually play Reno Jackson and Constructed, yes, that was the case, it was a good card. But here, you can see that in most cases, it becomes a value game. The opponents that actually play aggressive decks are actually pretty easy to beat overall. The tough opponents are the ones that have ridiculous value gain in their game plan. So that would include the final bosses at the end. We have Azari the Destroyer, who's going to destroy your deck anyway, so you have to speed the process up and actually beat him. The healing isn't important there. You have King Togglewaggle, which absolutely will outvalue you no matter what with his hero power. And you have the Beholder guy who draws a card into his hand every single turn, probably going to outvalue you too, though, you know, Jackson could have minor applications there. The point is, playing cards like Reno Jackson or Archbishop Benedictus are probably not going to win you the game. Most of my dungeon runs where I've actually won revolve around playing some ridiculous combo which just out-tempos your opponent or kills him from your hand basically by doing a huge amount of damage. So while you can get cards like Kazakus, which would be pretty good, you have to give up a lot of good card choices in order to play Kazakus, and that's not going to be worth it, so you should just stay away from unique decks in general. And that applies to both Warlock, Priest, and Mage, but definitely with Priest. I think the only exception there would be if you actually manage to get Shadow Reaper and Anduin and you can manage to pull off the Highlander Priest deck, but don't try to go for Raza the Unchained Priest unless you actually have Shadow Reaper and Anduin first. Opinion me, anyway. Oh, and when you are playing a Mino Jackson deck that's gonna be playing pretty slow, you might get so bored at the computer that this happens. 